by profession I'm a pleader, sort of legal interceder. I'm a barrister with the accent on the bar. If you're married and you rue it, stand on me, I'll pull you through it. Just let me know the facts and there you are. If I call a spade a shovel, my opponents simply gravel. As a twister, I'm the thickest of the thick. If there is a point, I make it. If there isn't, then I fake it. For in other words, I pop it on them quick. All day long I'm standing at the bar, proving white is black and black is white. If it wasn't for the facts of the early closing act, I'd be standing at the bar all night. Case of Spooner versus Spooner. Mr. Spooner was a mooner. Correspondent's name was Spicer, by the way. Mrs. Spooner said she'd sooner lose a spoon than spoon with Spooner. Mr. Spicer was far nicer any day. The judge said, Mr. Spicer, aren't you what they call a Spicer? This is not the first time you've been here, I'm sure. I said, don't be hard on Spicer. Mrs. Spooner may be nicer than the spicy spoon that Spicer spooned before. Now then, gentlemen, I think I've made that thoroughly clear to you. And if you'll retire and give us your verdict in two moments, we'll get on to the next case, my lord and gentlemen jury. This one, this case is one of a particularly heartless nature. Breach of promise. Yes, gentlemen, it's filled with the usual sloppy details, you know, the Sunday afternoon river trips. Finishing up with tea and cetera, stolen visits to picture palaces with the usual disentangling of arms and feet every time the attendant comes by with his electric torch, the usual lot of lovesick rots spoken in the dark and retailed afterwards by the blackmailing young brother under the sofa, the usual sheaf of idiotic letters written on the spur of the moment and regretted ever afterwards. Now, my lord, we have this poor young woman, the plaintiff, visibly suffering under the scoundrelly treatment of that scurvy knave, the defendant. Ah, my lord, he wormed his way into her young affection, only to cast her aside like a blighted tulip. Oh, my lord, imagine, imagine my poor client proudly telling her lady friends that at last she's engaged. Remarking to herself at the same time, thank her good any time off at last. Imagine her mortification after having spent her hard-earned savings on the usual two of everything, only to be told by this snake in the grass that everything is it off. Oh, my lord. But my client, being a woman of spirit, <coughs> is not having any. Oh, no, my lord. She believes in the old motto, if you don't want the goods... Don't mess them about, and she refuses, absolutely refuses, to go back onto the barrow like a damaged tomato. Now, gentlemen of the jury, there is no need for me to insult your intelligence by asking you the motive for this woman coming to court, but it was can only gaze in admiration at her pluck in bringing this case to court at all. Now, what, gentlemen, is the universal cure for a broken heart? Ah. Now we're coming to it. It's money. Yes, my lord, quite so. We've got to understand that. It's money. And in assessing the damages at 500 pounds, I am actuated by one motive and one motive only. It's all the defendant has got. So all day long I'm standing at the bar, proving white is black and black is white. If it wasn't for the facts of the early closing act, I'd be standing at the bar all night.